Now we all have the time that uh, some friends are calling suddenly out of the blue, say, hey, we're going to come for a drink. And in France, we call that the aperitif. And you got nothing kind of organized. And of course, you want to you know, have something to serve. And in France, you, you don't just drink like this. And there's one little snack that is made in France a lot called the allumette au fromage. It's very simple, translated the cheesy matchstick that I could translate further into the cheese pockets. I know in America, you got that thing called the hot pocket, which is this kind of rectangle of pastry with something inside. Well, the Alimet of fromage is exactly that. Two layers of puff pastry that you buy in the shop, and you're gonna fill this with a homemade Mornay, put a piece of cheese inside, cook this, and voila, you've got a superb aperitif. And the best thing is these things, when there's some leftover, you can go mousing around in the night and go, you know, finish them off, but that's something else. But if you want to learn how to make these delicious cheesy pockets, keep watching. Right, so the most important, of course, the puff pastry. What you see here, and it's a store-bought pre-roll, pre-made, pure butter puff pastry. I've just took a rectangle and I've divided it into six smaller rectangles. I advise definitely to use at least six centimeters, or I think it's around two and a half inches wide. And this is around 12 centimeters long, and which is the, the normal kind of length. Right? It's one per person. So that's going to be, for instance, the bottom, that's going to be the top. So we've got three pockets on here. All right, so make sure you have this already kind of cut and detailed and keep this cold in the fridge while we're making the sauce. As soon as your pastry is pre-cut, okay, it's in the fridge, then we're gonna make the cheese sauce and that's super easy. Or what you need to have, make sure to have all the ingredients, you'll find them on the recipe card already. You have to grate the cheese and measure the butter and flour, have an egg yolk and the milk ready. And I'm using a saucier pan, but you can use a sauce pan, absolutely no problem. Now making a cheese sauce, uh, technically called a mornay, doesn't have to be complicated at all. First thing you do, piece of butter, and we're gonna melt this. Okay, as soon as your butter is melted, you put all of the flour, everything in, mix together, and you're gonna reduce the heat to low. Okay, and we're gonna cook that mixture of flour and butter for three minutes. Okay, my time is up, and as you can see, I didn't mix it around, it's got a chance to flatten a bit and really cook. So when it's here, you can turn your heat off if you want. But what we're gonna do here, we've got the hot roux and we're gonna use some cold milk. So just half of it, just a little bit. And we're gonna try to get that base mixture here. Okay, so I've added the other half of my milk in and you get that kind of paste. I'm gonna raise my heat to medium and I'm gonna keep on stirring like this until it really starts to thicken. Okay, my base bechamel is ready and it's nice and thick. So what I'm gonna do here, First, I'm going to change to a spoon before I add the cheese in. Okay, so the reason I'm using a spoon is because we need to add the cheese bit by bit here and melt it in. If you use your whisk, what's going to happen is it's going to entangle in your whisk and you may have a clump of cheese forming inside your whisk and you don't want that. So it's easier to use a spoon like this and you can raise your heat to maximum, medium, really the maximum. And all what we want to do is to melt the cheese in the sauce bit by bit. Okay, I'm finished. So once you're done, you should have this. See a nice clean sauce that flows well and no clumps of cheese. All right, so from here you can turn your heat off and then we're gonna add the egg yolk. So of the heat, I'm gonna take my egg yolk, up everything in and same like the cheese with the spoon. Of the heat, I repeat, otherwise you're gonna cook your egg, you're just gonna incorporate this with the sauce base. Now you may have noticed that there is no seasoning in there. I didn't put any salt, I didn't put any pepper and whatever. Because when you make that cheese sauce huh, or the Mornay, the cheese you're gonna be using is gonna define some of the saltiness. Huh? So you, ca you can use here cheddar, you can use a Gruyere, you can use a Conte, but you could also use Gorgonzola, you can use blue cheese, and that is gonna give already a very big strength to your sauce. This is why the seasoning is gonna happen now. So you're gonna taste your sauce and accordingly, we're gonna add a bit of salt, pepper, nutmeg, and cayenne pepper. All right, so always taste your preparation. Take a little spoon, just a little bit like that. Definitely okay with the salt here. I think a little pinch, I think, of cayenne pepper. Maybe a grating of nutmeg. Just a little bit, not too much. And some pepper. You can use white or black, we're not gonna see the sauce, so just a little bit like this. And you see, and that is gonna add something to your sauce. Now remember, my heat is off. 
Okay, you don't want to burn anything, especially the eggs, you don't want to overcook them. And that is ready. Now, all what we're going to do, we're going to reserve this into a clean container. You can use just a small, you know, a cold bowl, a metal, or any, anything. And if you want to go further, you can pass this through a sieve and when you put it into a bowl. And that's it, we're done. So the cheese sauce is made. As you can see, it's very easy to make. It took, what, 10 minutes if you're doing it at home. And it tastes so much better than anything you can buy already ready-made. All what needs to happen now is to let it cool down so it solidifies a little bit. Uh, so we can work with it easily. So two options. You can leave it in the bowl, put a plastic over it. It has to touch the sauce to avoid any drying. But what I prefer doing, I put this into a piping bag. And that protects the sauce. And then I've got the straight nozzle on there. So when it's ready, I'm just going to have to press on that bag and boom, I'm going to have this cheese sauce immediately on my puff pastry without any effort. All right, back to our preparation. So these little pockets in brackets, what we need to make sure is not to have sauce on the edges here. So one of the trick, you take a little bit of water, you wash your hand first and with your finger, and you're going to take the bottom part and plenty of water and you make an edge like when you're painting a border and that is going to be where we're going to be placing this and this is going to be basically so, kind of seal everything with the water and the dough. And that space here is where we're going to have our cheese mix here, our cheese sauce plus the cheese on top. All right, so next is the sauce. It's in a piping bag. So because I've got that little zone here, what I'm going to do is to make sure I've just, just a bit of sauce right here. Okay, and repeat the same on every one. And then you're going to take little strips, I've cut little stripes of, of cheese, and we're going to put one or two on top to you, on, on top like that. All right, so let's focus on this one, for instance. So you see how I've got a border like this? And because now we want to take this and put this over so that it falls on the actual pastry. Perfect. I've got my three little pockets. So before we seal the edges, very important because the, the pastry is going to really get soft back in the fridge for a good 10 minutes so that we can work without stressing. Okay, so it's been in the fridge and now we need to seal everything. So I've kind of zoomed on this one so that you, can, you can see this layer of dough on top of each other. So all what we're going to do here, we're going to use that little tool here, which is a blade, and we're going to do a straight cut on here just in the dough and make sure, let me move this a little bit, we're going to just cut the edge. So you see, we've got the, the, the off cut here and the edge now is totally trimmed. And basically, we can repeat the same. So same thing on here, I'm going to use my tool, I'm going to be there and I need to make sure both of the dough, you know, the bottom and the top layer are in there. And I'm going to do the same for the edges. So you get the idea. Right, so here we are. And now we're ready for the final touch. So the first thing, we need to leave the hot hair, uh, the hot hair in there to escape. So usually you make a little chimney at the top with a, with a knife, okay? And then you can brush it up with milk, but the usual is an egg wash, uh, which is basically an egg yolk with a little bit of water. If you really want to go a little fancy, you can add some little squares of cheese, or oh, it can be squares, it can be any, any shape, I mean, usually it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna try it out just there, oh. But that's it, now we're ready to cook our little uh, allumette au fromage, uh, the cheese pockets, and look how nice this looks. Uh, this is more the Escoffier uh, touch that you can see here. So we've done all the due diligence, and even though sometimes, keep in mind that with puff pastry, even though it looks super nice here, it may grow funny, whatever. If it's not perfect, you know what? It is home cooking. We're not gonna worry too much about it. So for the cooking, you're gonna preheat your oven at 230 degrees Celsius first, okay? Just before you put this in. Now I'm gonna reduce the heat to 200 C, which is about 400 Fahrenheit. And I'm gonna put this in the oven on the middle shelf, middle rack of the oven, and cook this for 25 minutes. And then, surprise at the end, let's see how it's gonna look like. I'm quite curious. Right, so my pastry cheese puff are out of the oven, and as I said, even though they were looking pristine and made by the book, the result can be totally different. And it really depends 
on the type of first phase you're going to buy. Okay? And because it's storable, so it's a machine made, you don't know how it's going to grow. And this is a realistic picture of what can happen when you make them. So when you make a big batch, you will have some good ones like this one, some less good ones, some really Frankenstein, Frankenstein-y like these ones. But this is part of the reality of using puff pastry, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The taste is in there, and if you have guests, you put the big batch of those on the table with a few drinks, and don't worry, everybody is gonna like that. So we're gonna try to open that one, because it was really bad, I had to kind of put it back together because it was growing like open like this, so let's look inside. Okay, so let's operate. Test subject number one, I've got the knife here, and uh, Ah, 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 I can feel a bit of resistance, look, there's a little sauce, there's a little sauce, what's going to be in there? Yeah, okay, the sauce is there, a bit cooked, but we should get like a sandwich of goodness, well, I need to try this, let's see what, uh, mmm, mmm, oh, crunchy, no, it's not bad. Now, let's analyze uh, what happened, so you see that went kind of flipped open, like this. And that here is a layer of crusty cheese. I think the cheese grilled when it was open like that. And then you see the sauce is still there. Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah, The sauce is there. The sauce is still there, nice and moist, inside the cheese puff. So let's put everything together back. And that's gonna be another bite of goodness. I mean, what can we say to conclude about this allumette of fromage? I think it's a, it's a really interesting one because when you look at it, you say, oh, you know, it's, it looks difficult because you know, the pastry goes that way and that way, etc., etc. But then when you eat it, it's like, wow, this is really good. <laughs> nice and cheesy. Can I have more? And, you know, see, that's kind of strange balance. So I think, you know, definitely I like the, the surprise effect. And what I'm going to give you here for the, the recipe for the measurements, you can definitely make at least eight or more of those and you will have some good looking ones and like the one we had there. But at the end of the day, you know, I don't think no one's going to care because it's home cooking and these things taste delicious. But that completes the video for this week. It was a bit of fun, a bit of an experiment there at last. Huh? And don't forget all the things I told you about sealing the dough and that's very important. The egg wash, the temperatures, etc, etc. And you're gonna have on your hand an easy little party trick when you got friends over and that goes beautifully with an aperitif. Okay, that's it for me. I will see you all next week for another French cooking video. Take care all. Bye-bye.